Hey guys, how's it going? Um, a couple of weeks ago, we made an episode on buying a house in the Bay Area. And one thing that we briefly mentioned was a document that we use, like an Excel spreadsheet that we use to kind of calculate how much house we can afford and what our monthly payments would be and how it would compare, uh, to, uh, compare to other investment opportunities. So I thought I'm going to go and show you the spreadsheet and upload it to our website so that you can download it and use it for yourself. So let's get started. Okay, this is the spreadsheet that I talked about. Um, it allows you to do a couple of things, but primarily um, it'll allow you to figure out how much house you can afford. And it will also make it easy for you to split the cost and ownership of the house between him and her. So these are just placeholders, the him and the her. Um, could be two hims, two hers, or something completely else. Um, but it'll allow you to define how much each of the partners in a relationship own of the house and how much they are contributing. Um, and lastly, it'll allow you to uh, calculate uh, the total cost for owning the house compared to continuing to rent. And it includes your monthly payments for the mortgage, as well as your property taxes, the deductions, tax deductions uh, for interest and property taxes, uh, as well as your opportunity costs. Um, so how much money can you make, for example, off of your down payment in the stock market um, compared to using that money to buying a house. Uh, and it will output you a nice graph here and you can clearly see where, uh, after how many months your total cost will kind of cross the threshold of now you're making more money than if you had continued to rent. But up until that point, renting would have been the more lucrative option. So if you sell your house after only 90 months, for example, then continuing to rent would have been the, the better investment given all the the data that you can input over here. And this is what I am going to walk you through first. So all of these little red boxes that you see, um, they're all editable and you can adjust them to your personal preferences and how what your situation is. Uh, I filled in an example here with a house for $800,000, 20% down payment, which will result in a $640,000 loan at a 5% annual percentage rate over 30 years with 12 payments per year. This should not change for most people, but you can if you need to. Um, paying a 1% property tax, tax annually, um, your tax deductions that you can take on interest as well as your property taxes are 26%. So this is, should be your highest marginal tax bracket. Um, you're currently paying $3,000 in rent and your expected return of investment if you invest money uh, in the stock market or anywhere else really um, is set at 7% right now. And this is used to calculate opportunity cost. And then your property return of investment. How much value on average do you expect this property to gain year over year? And uh, this here is the, the actual uh, return of investment that you could make per pay period on your down payment. Um, so if you invest $160,000 into the stock market at a 7% return of investment rate annually, then you would make a thousand, almost a thousand dollars per month off of that investment. That's that's quite a lot of money, and that opportunity cost is included in my cost calculations. And the last number is the realtor closing cost. So if you go and sell your house, you will have to pay your realtor and the buyer's realtor, um, and and some other closing costs. And this is then included in this number here, or defined by this number here. How much that is. The columns over here, they allow you to. Oh, before we go there, uh, all of these, all of these uh, fields here, they have a little fly out that if you hover, hover over them, will pop up and will give you a more detailed description of what what this field is, what you can configure here, and how it will affect other parts of the spreadsheet. 
So if we go over here in the side, um, what you can do here is you can define uh, basically contributions to the your current rent situation as well as the mortgage situation. Uh, this means that we're not assuming that people contribute to the rent and or the mortgage equally. Um, you for sure can set it that way. So you just fill in 50% everywhere here and that will do that. Or if you have a joint, uh, if you have joint financials or do not split assets among you, yourselves, for example, if you're married, um, you can just fill in 100% everywhere here and, and just look at his numbers, him, uh, and ignore her numbers. Um, that, that's basically as if one person owned the house uh, in that situation. So the first line allows you to define the contributions to rent, uh, assuming you're renting right now, or basically how much each person is contributing to your current living situation. Um, I've used an example here at 40% that he pays 40% of the rent, she pays 60%. And her, her contribution is always like 100% minus his. Um, so there's, there's never a third party involved some, in some way. Uh, so he pays $1,200, she pays $1,800 to reach this $3,000 total rent that you're currently paying. We assume the house that you, you guys want to buy is split equally between, the, the ownership is split equally between the two of you. And the, the way that the spreadsheet works is if the ownership is spread equally or at the same rate that the ownership is uh, split, the spreadsheet assumes all the cost for the house will be split at the same rate. So if you're splitting home ownership 50-50, um, all the mortgage contributions, property tax contributions, etc., they will also be split equally. There's one um, ex noteworthy difference or exception to that. That is the down payment contribution. Uh, in a lot of cases, um, one one partner may have more cash reserves, more money saved um, to contribute to a down payment. And um, we want to be able to reflect this in the spreadsheet. This was certainly the case for us, um, which is why I added this feature. Um, so basically, the goal is still, in the end, with the down contribution to match the, the ownership contribution or the mortgage contribution. But the, the down contribution uh, basically allows you to uh, implicitly specify a private loan from him to her or from her to him, depending on who contributes more to the to the mortgage, um, uh, in 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 the amount of, of that is required to to match the mortgage contribution. So in this example that I've typed in here, you can see the mortgage contribution is fifty percent. So both people will own the house at the same rate and will have to pay the same contributions to the mortgage. But the down contribution is at 60%, so meaning he pays 60% of the down payment and she pays 40%, reflected in these two numbers, 96,000 and 64,000. But she doesn't get off the hook. Uh, so instead, the money that the the 10% that he pays in excess and the 10% that she pays less, um, they are... A, which is $16,000 down here, assumed to be a private loan from him to her. Um, or the other way around if the down contribution is is, is like 40%, for example. So he loans her $16,000 um, as an interest-free private loan. Um, and uh, that allows her to effectively put down the same amount of money as him, uh, 50%. Um, but she will have to repay him this private loan. And this is the down repayment amount here. So over 360 months, that is 30 years, the same as the, the, the mortgage term, um, she will repay him $16,000, and that is $44.44 per month. And so <clears throat> the most important columns on the spreadsheet uh, for you to be able to determine what you, A, what you monthly payments will be effectively for him and her, um, as well as what the cost uh, of buying this house will be. And lastly, how much money you can expect to make um, when you sell the house. 
those are the three important pieces of information. And you can get these in the following locations. So you have a total of uh, uh, six columns up here. Uh, uh, it, there's like three sets of columns. There's these two columns, there's these two columns, and there's these two columns. And one of those columns always refers to him and one refers to her. Um, the first one basically just gives you your monthly payment for uh, your mortgage. So um, the principal plus the mortgage interest um, sp split by the mortgage contribution amount. So um, six, approximately $1,600 uh, or six, almost $1,700 for both him and her. The next two columns give you the adjusted amount, and this is adjusted by, and you can hover, hover over this little tooltip here to retrieve this information. It's adjusted by the private loan repayment amount. So we talked about that in the following configuration here, in the given configuration, that uh, she will pay him $44.5 per month um, for the $16,000 private loan for the down payment. Um, and so the adjusted amount uh, of monthly payments is adjusted by this private loan. So that means he pays $44.5 less effectively every month and she pays $44.5 more every month effectively. The last two columns here are include the, the property taxes for this house. So basically this takes your, takes your annual property tax, uh, the annual property tax that you have to pay divided by 12 and adds it to the monthly payment. And uh, your mortgage broker or mortgage provider will probably allow you to roll your property tax payments into your monthly payments. Um, you can do that certainly, but even if you choose to not do that, you will have to pay your property taxes annually or biannually at some point anyway. And so for calculating your month, the effective monthly costs, you will still want to kind of like uh, add that to your monthly payments, just at least in your math so that you know what you will be paying every month. Um, but in addition to having these six columns or three pairs of columns, uh, you also have two different rows here that are really important. Um, and you have two different numbers here. And you can see that on each of those lines, they are actually a little bit different. Um, and this is important because the first number is your post-deduction number. Um, so the first number is what you expect you will have, what you need to expect to be paying uh, in monthly costs for your mortgage, um, assuming that you can deduct uh, your deductions, your tax deductions, effectively your interest and property tax deductions immediately. Um, so if you, it basically takes your annual uh, interest tax and property tax deductions and divides them by 12. So this gives you an, a good impression of your effective cost uh, of your mortgage, but it's a little bit misleading in the sense of that this is not actually what you will be paying out of pocket every month. Um, the second number, the pre-deduction number, is more what you will be paying out of pocket every month. Um, the, the the other number just includes the basically the amount of taxes that you will be saving uh, given through your deductions at the end of the year when you pay federal taxes. So, for short, the the top number is your effective cost. The bottom number is your out of pocket cost for owning this house. Um, and then over here, this graph shows you the cost um, for owning the house. So you can see that early, and, and cost in terms of comparing it to renting instead. So as you can see, for the first couple of years, um, for the first 10 or so, 12, 13, maybe even 14 years, um, owning this house will actually be a net negative investment effectively compared to continuing to rent. So <clears throat> this might not be a big deal because owning a house has other benefits other than just what the, what its financial performance is. So obviously it's, it'll be your house. You can, you can do with it, with it, whatever, whatever you want, you can uh, modify it and, and uh, renovate it and whatever. Right. So, so there's other benefits of owning the house, but, but this reflects the, the total cost of ownership compared to continuing to rent. Um, 
so from a financial perspective, at least if you intend to sell this house within 10 years, then from a financial perspective, it would make more sense uh, to instead continue to rent. But you can see like after 160 or so months, um, this this starts flipping from from uh, being, having a cost to effectively generating more um, value than continuing to rent. Um, and the, the, the two primary factors that kind of like affect how this graph uh, behaves is your down payment as well as your annual percentage rate and your stock return of investment as well as your property return of investment. So these numbers together, they kind of like affect this graph. And, and you should go and type in your actual numbers here and then you will be able to see what, what owning this property means in terms of, of cost for you compared to rent, continuing to rent. The, the last interesting number that you want to get out of this spreadsheet is your cash out amounts. Um, so how much money can you expect to make off of owning the house uh, given a specific month of sale? And month of sale means after like month of ownership. So if you sell your house on after just owning it one month, you can expect to that he walks away with $72,000 and she walks away with $40,000. Um, and considering that you just put down a down payment for $160,000, that, that's a pretty shady deal. <laughs> you, you probably want to walk away with at least that amount. But um, uh, but in the end, uh, you can see that very quickly um, after owning the house for, let's say, let's say, uh, where are we here? Like 36 months or three years? Yeah, 36 months. Um, he walks away with $133,000 and she walks away with like almost $100,000. So only after only three years, this, this house could, can be a profitable investment. Um, uh, at least if you do not include opportunity costs, which these numbers do not. But like if you, let's say you, you want to use this as a starter house and you want to buy it and, and anticipate to be selling at, at, at some point in the future to buy a, a bigger, uh, more expensive house. Um, so maybe you you want to own this house until it has reached a certain cash out value, right? But maybe, maybe you need, um, each of you needs at least, let's say, uh, two hundred thousand dollars in cash out value to to be able to move on to the next house. So you can use this table here, and you can find exactly this row: two hundred thousand dollars for 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 each partner. Um, that's like eighty eight months, right? So like, what's that? Seven years, approximately seven and a half years. Um. Yeah, so this is how you can use the spreadsheet. Um, I highly uh, encourage you guys to go and play around with these numbers, uh, adjust them to the, the actual values that, that make more sense for you in terms of property value, down payment, annual percentage rate, etc. cetera. Um, and, then, and then see what it does um, for both your uh, out-of-pocket costs, your effective costs, your um, cost of ownership, as well as the the cash out amounts that you can expect to walk away from um, when you sell the house. Awesome. Um, so that was our mortgage spreadsheet. I hope it'll be helpful to you guys. I'll upload it to our website and I'll drop the link um, to the download in the description below. If you have any questions, uh, please don't don't hesitate and ask them in the comments below. Um, I'll be responding to every one of those questions. I'll be trying to help you guys figure out how to use this spreadsheet. I know it's a little bit intimidating, um, but once you figure it out, it, it's really powerful and really helpful. And it helped us a lot to make uh, to make our buying decision for the house. Um, so go ahead and download the spreadsheet, mess around with it. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks a lot. Hope to see you soon.